Welcome back to DXV Today, where we are turning our attention to sustainable food options here in the UAE, where we are joined by Louis Blake, a plant-based entrepreneur and founder of PXV Lifestyle. Louis, welcome to the show. Um, a plant-based entrepreneur, it's the first time I've ever heard that. So tell <laughs> me, what is that? <laughs> um, well, I guess I've been working in the plant-based space for around 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Various businesses in the space, and then more recently, came out to Dubai, opened PXB, which is a cafe, restaurant, um, events business. And we're just trying to promote the adoption of healthy, sustainable plant-based food. I love that, I love that. Mm. And you've, you've actually brought some amazing snacks for us uh, right here. Tell me more about PXB Lifestyle. Uh, I know you said you do events, but specifically the food, let's talk about it. And sure. especially when it comes to the containers and the whole process behind it. Exactly, so I think people are understanding more and more of the um, environmental impacts of a standard Western diet and how we need to shift towards more plant-based food. In fact, if you're plant-based, typically you're creating around 75% less carbon emissions than the standard Western diet. Mm -hmm. But we have to make it tasty, we have to make it look good, smell good, be exciting. And so what we're trying to do is promote whole foods, plant-based, lots of colour, lots of flavour. And so what we've brought today is some of the different salad bowls that we offer, and some of the sweeter stuff as well. Oh. Now, I did want to ask, Louis, obviously, your business is all based on sustainability on plant-based foods, but there's a lot of restaurants that don't have that branding. They're very much with the Western diet, lots of meat. But are there things that other restaurants can do to be more sustainable, maybe not to the same degree? 100%. I think one of the biggest issues we have, actually, is food waste. Our enforcement of food is wasted. So portion sizes, recommendations to guests, these are big things. Encouraging guests to take food home that's left over Sometimes I think it actually tastes better the next day yeah. when you've let all the flavour <laughs> flavor soak in for sure. But I would think about um, how to cross over fresh food across different dishes on the menu so you're not having lots of different skews. And having a, a decent plant-based offering so that people that do want to make more sustainable choices are able to. So that's featuring more fruits and vegetables where we can work with local growers, local producers, whether that's greens and micro herbs. We've actually got some amazing businesses in the UAE that grow food and produce food here. So trying to find out who they are, work with them. And I think consumers actually don't mind paying a little bit more if they're bought into the story and the narrative as to why people are doing it. Mm. I know that uh, coming to the UAE means that you've seen the opportunity to grow your business here. Sure. Have you seen a difference compared to Europe, for example? I think people are really open-minded here. I found people to be really open-minded about trying new things. Um, there's quite a kind of inherent food culture in the UK and people are very tied to their a Sunday dinner or whatever is where it features a lot of meat but I found with so many different cultures and people from different backgrounds you have a lot of different food choices anyway and so people tend to be a lot more open-minded and I think sustainability is very high on the agenda here mm. you know people are really interested in into participating in creating a more sustainable city and, and world and I found I found yeah the attitudes to be really open I really like it mm. Interesting. Mm. So can I just ask, I know you're obviously talking about restaurants, but how can we interpret sustainability, and this is kind of for both of you, into our own kitchens? How can mm. we cook and have a sustainable mindset? Mm. Yeah, great question. So I think first and foremost, it's, it's this shift that we're seeing globally around shifting away from the most environmentally damaging foods. Top of that list is beef, second is lamb, and then actually nine of the 10 most damaging uh, foods uh, that we eat are from animals. So it's shifting from foods that are very high in animal derived foods m towards more plant based food. And it doesn't mean that everyone needs to stop eating meat overnight. Mm -hmm. It just means where perhaps we were having you know, meat three times a day, we maybe swap out that protein source for tofu, tempeh, lentils, quinoa, some of these more plant based sources and I think that's quite an easy step that anyone can can take and you know, if you're on Instagram or TikTok you'd have seen in recent years all the amazing recipes that are available it's impossible to scroll through without seeing mm. something delicious that you could cook so I think that's a really good first step. Now Lou, we know when it comes to sustainability and food there's a very big connect because of course it takes lots of litres of water to grow certain things mm. it takes a lot of resources to raise certain animals uh, and I do think the most important place to start is from the source but how important do you think it is for environmental agencies, governments to work with restaurants when it comes to the planet's safety rather than just individuals and their preferences? 100%, I mean, we, we need to incentivize people to actually behave in a way that's more sustainable. Ultimately, uh, a restaurant is a commercial enterprise that they need to make money. 
very often with lots of competition and tight margins, <coughs> they will choose the cheapest produce or cheapest source, which typically isn't the most sustainable. They're, they're cutting corners traditionally in, in many respects. So I think incentivizing restaurants, working with them, and also education. You know, we all have a desire to, I think for most of us, we care about the world that we live in. We want to do the right thing, but we don't always know how to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So creating schemes and, and, and legislation where we actually reward restaurants and participants for doing the right thing and then explaining to them how to do it. Yeah, Louis, I, I think what you're talking about, people can sit there and say like, yes, I, I'm behind it. I'm vegetarian, have been vegetarian my whole life. But for a lot of people turning to vegan, also it's quite, it's, mm. it's very expensive. You know, uh, is that a myth? Is that a reality? <laughs> uh, what would you, what would you Could say to that? Could it change, Louis? That's, yeah. That's yeah. For sure, I mean, look, as, as popularity increases, as, as demand increases, we have more competition. Competition breeds innovation, it breeds quality, it breeds better pricing. But to answer your first question, I don't think that everyone needs to go 100% vegan. Mm -hmm. I think if you're eating the analogs, so the, the, the different meats and cheese substitutes, of course it can be expensive, but rice and beans, complete protein, mm -hmm. super affordable, more affordable than the, the meat in many, on many occasions. I think if you're eating out, it can be more expensive, but certainly if you're cooking for yourself, I think it can actually be a lot cheaper. Yeah. I love that because you touched on it earlier about the whole foods. And mm. for me, when I've done a stint of being vegan, I really like to eat whole foods mm. and rather go than going for the mock meat alternatives. Yeah. For me, that's really important to keep my diet as clean as possible while trying to be vegan. Yeah. I think you feel the health benefits for that as well, definitely, right? If you're yeah. eating a more, you know, you're getting more nutrient dense foods, you're, you're definitely gonna, for your skin, for your sleep, for your energy levels. You have me sold at skin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm the, in. Food, the food I'm smells in. absolutely amazing that we've been seeing on the table. So thank you for bringing it in. We will be no eating problem. it. <laughs> Louis <laughs> Blake welcome. from DXB Lifestyle, thank you so much for coming on to DXB today. Thank you. And we move on to one of our favorite thrift shops in the United Arab Emirates, where you can get some amazing vintage clothing for a pretty good price. We sent Khalid down there to show you more. I'm here at a very unique concept right in the heart of Dubai where fashion meets photography. So let's go check out the store. I'm here in Dubai at one of the most unique concepts that's being brought into the city at the first vintage thrift store, Dig It Vintage Thrift Store with the founder, Tofik. Well, Tofik, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. So where did you get the idea from? Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. And um, the concept came up uh, a long time ago for me as I was studying abroad. Um, I got a lot into collectible and old pieces that are no longer in fashion. It's been really great for us and, and this is our passion, this is what we do. We love uh, finding different um, old pieces that are no longer in fashion, no longer available. Uh, some of them are like pieces of history and pieces of um, that depict the time and the, and the age. And we're really into the 90s, like that's what we grew up on and, and we really like it. So what can you tell me about this partnership? So we partnered up with Analog The Room, uh, who are a vintage film camera store. And uh, uh, I met Kamal actually in a, in a store and uh, we, we had a conversation about it and sustainability uh, was our goal. So I thought, you know, let's partner up. So you guys should speak to Kamal for sure. Well, anyways, thank you so much, Tofik. It's uh, been a pleasure and I can't wait to check some clothes out for myself. I'm here today with Kemal, who is the founder of Analog The Room, and he's gonna tell us everything we need to know about film photography. Well, it's a pleasure being here with you today, and I cannot wait to see what we have on film. Amazing, thank you for having us. And uh, let me start by talking about Analog The Room. So basically, Analog The Room is a space where uh, you basically find everything related to film photography. We have a lot of people that comes in to get familiar with, with film photography. Uh, so we do a lot of workshops as well, and we have a studio space that is open for people to come in and try different cameras and explore different options of uh, film photography uh, techniques. We have a dark room as well, like people can even get in and print their own pictures or develop uh, their film. So what was the whole idea of joining a vintage thrift store? I think our community, they share the same mentality. And uh, what we're doing, both of us, is giving old items a new life. 
And the same for us, we, we refurbish the old cameras and we put them to work and make sure that they are working properly. And then we pass them to a new generation, I would say, or uh, a, new, a new house. Well, if you love film photography or even a vintage thrift store, this is the place where you need to be. So come on down and get some photographs or even buy some clothes. Well, I can't wait to see Khalid's vintage wardrobe, but now it's time for DXB in 60. Faris, you ready? Yes, are you ready, Tatiana? Because we're gonna put you on the spot. Gosh. You've got 60 seconds. I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of questions about yourself so we can get to know you as quickly as possible. Great. All right, and we're gonna start that clock in three, two, one. If you weren't the founder of Goombook, where would you be working? In Dubai. What's one thing you can't live without? My children. <laughs> Your motto in life and in work? Let's do it. Let's do it. Your hidden gem in Dubai? Um, the Etihad Museum. Etihad Museum. Very hidden, that gem. Uh, what's your inspiration? Um, nature. Nature. Uh, a topic you could go on about for ages. Oh my God, sustainability. That's why we brought you in. <laughs> um, top series that you've watched this summer, if you have a TV. I don't watch series. You don't watch TV? Oh my uh -huh. gosh. Uh, what's a book you're reading at the moment? A book written by, uh, it's a, sorry, <laughs> it's a book actually about my mother that oh. was written uh, by a gentleman in Greece and I found out about it just a year ago and my mom is in it so wow. I'm reading it and I'm really discovering my mother from a different point of view. That's incredible, what's the name of the book? Your time's um, up by the way, but what's the name of the book? <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically, it's about the rescue of a, of a minister in Greece at the times of the colonels and, and the military coup. Um, and it's uh, basically a rescue in Amorgos, the, the, the island there. So it's about rescue in Amorgos. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's so wow. cool. Incredible. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tatiana, for joining us on the show. It's been thoroughly enjoyable learning more about sustainability with you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me anytime. Thank you. <laughs> so now it's time for a break. And after the break, we're going to be back with Reform Athletica. They're going to be joining us in the studio for a Pilates workout like no other. So stay right there. <laughs> 